everyone. Happy New Year. If you guys will stand to your feet, you guys all look awesome. I see there's some Dallas Cowboy fans in the congregation. You'll be blessed even more this year. Amen. I'm just kidding. Let's go ahead and pray. If everybody will, let's extend our hands this morning in this new year, our first service together with our family. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. We thank you, Father, for who you are, Lord Jesus. And we focus on today, not yesterday, not tomorrow, but right now, Father, because right now is where you are with us, Father, as a body, Lord. So strip it all away, Father, even the last words we had with our spouse, our kids, Father, whatever was going on, whatever's in our thoughts, Father, Lord, I just speak peace right now. In stillness, Father, that we would be able to hear your spirit, Father, this morning speaking to our spirit, Lord. We say come and have your way in this service. In Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen. Let me see you guys put your hands this morning together. You're going to be our, our drone here. We thank you, Jesus. You are so faithful, God. Yes, you are, Lord. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal the joy I am, when brokenness and pain is all I know, I won't be. I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love a place to hide I'm not a captain to these lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in
Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Father, and we stand in your love and your promises, Lord. Father, you are faithful. Father, and you're a God that never fails. You're the God of the impossible. You are almighty. You are all powerful. And there is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, Father. There is none like you. Come on with your own words and your own mouth. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, Father. No, no, no. Make 
promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, oh, Jesus, oh, that is who you are, Jehovah Jireh, cause you We worship you, we worship you, you are here, healing every heart, we worship you, we worship you, cause you are here, turning lives you you are here bending every heart we worship you we worship you cause you are we make a miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are, oh, you are, yes. We make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Come on, declare it. Oh, we make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are, oh, sing it again, yes. We make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are. Oh, Jesus, that is who you are, Lord. Oh, that is who you are, Jesus. Oh, because even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Make, 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 make
darkness, my God, that is who you Last year, we can all definitely say that it was not a good year. Last year was such a battle. A lot of us experienced loss. Friends, family. Even with those people, I think even now, with this new year coming in, it's time for a mindset to change. It's time for a heart to be turned around. And I literally just got this within the last two weeks. We serve an awesome God. That blessed us with the Holy Spirit. The same God that gave us the mouth to praise, but also to repent. the spirit of despair because I serve a God that is the way maker the miracle worker the promise keeper the light in the darkness a God who is a redeemer a God who is my champion and that is the God that I will praise here now and forevermore time with your voices. Let's praise this God, our one true God. champion you are my 
my Savior, you are my Redeemer. Cause you are here touching every heart, healing every spirit, turning lives around, mending our minds. And we are here, we are here worshiping you, the one true God. This isn't my year. This is God's year. This is my God's year.
senses are moved. We need a move. Oh, we're stepping. This is our move. Father, this year we are stepping in with you, Lord Jesus. Father, we're taking out that step of faith, Lord Jesus, trusting your ways and your plans, not being held to what was yesterday or what's to come, Father, but for right now. Lord, we're stepping in the now. So, Father, come and do what you need to do. Father, in each and every one of us in this room, Father, that we would take it beyond these four walls so that you can move. And you can shift what needs to be shifted through your people, through your children, God. We say yes to the call. We say yes to doing what we need to do so that you can do what you need to do in us, through us, as a body of Christ. Come and move, Father. Come and move, Jesus. Come and move, Jesus. Yes, we say yes. Come on, every voice. We say yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. Come and have your way in us. No more of the old. No more old ways. But we focus on today, Jesus. We say come and have your way. We say, come and have your way. Amen. Can we celebrate Jesus. the Lord this morning? Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm convinced he'll do exactly what we allow him to do. If we allow him to come and have his way, he'll come and have his way. If we allow the Holy Spirit to move, he'll move. If we allow him to bring healing to our life, He'll bring healing to our life. Amen. So this morning, I want to pray for you. I just want to believe God to work in your life, to, to perform miracles if need be, to, to do something great for you. I don't know what you're looking for this year. I don't know. I just know it needs to be better than last year. Yeah. So we're, we're just going to pray and believe that God's going to give us a better year this year. So how many of you have an unspoken need? You'd just like to lift your hand this morning and just, and just say, Pastor, God knows what this is, and I, I know he's got it under control, and I'm going to trust him, and I'm going I'm to believe him. Amen. Well, let's just pray together. Father, we just thank you this morning for your goodness, for your grace for your mercy that are, that are new every morning. Lord, we, we appreciate you. We love you. We adore you. Father, today we thank you, God, that you are on the throne of our life and nothing can change that. Lord, we just, we just lift every need to you. God, we know you are the all-sufficient God. You are the enough God. And Lord, we thank you, God, that, that you're at work in our life and you're going to change us. You're going to mold us. You're going to make us into the man of God or the woman of God that you want us to be. And Lord, we just pray this morning, God, that, that you're glorified in every decision we make. And Father, I just lift every need to you and I commit them to you. And I know who I commit to you. I know what I commit to you. Lord, you're able to keep. You're able to set a guard over. You're able to watch over. And Lord, we just thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen. Let's bless the Lord this morning one more time today. <laughs> Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Well, you may be seated. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for uh, being here. We've got a, an announcement video we want you to watch. But now's the time for us to receive the Lord's tithe and his offering. Uh, we have three ways to give here. Just uh, You can put it in one of these boxes on uh, the columns around the building or, or on the out, outside walls, those, those boxes there. Just be sure and turn that in. You can turn it in now or you can turn it in at the end of the service, whatever makes you feel 
comfortable. We also have Easy Tithe. It's an easy way for you to give. Just just download that app and search for Hob First Assembly. You can find us. It'll walk you through the steps and how to just be faithful in your giving. Amen. God bless you as you give this morning. Welcome to Hobbs First Assembly. These are your weekly announcements. If you're a first time guest, we'd love the opportunity to get to know you better. There is a connect card located in the seat back in front of you. If you'd fill it out and take it to the welcome center after service, we'd love to meet you. If you're watching service online, you can click the guest button on our website at hopsfirstassembly.org and fill out the connect card there. On January 4th at 5 p.m., we will be taking down all the Christmas decorations. If you guys did not get an opportunity to help us decorate, here's another opportunity to help us take down all the decorations. We'll see you on January 4th at 5 p.m. Hey church, if you're between the ages 18 and 35, we would love for you to be a part of Limitless Young Adults. We will be reconnecting January 14th, 2021 on Thursday nights for Bible study and Sunday nights for hangouts. can hear me. All right. So I don't even have to ask how many of you are looking for a better year this year. Not even a question, not even something we have to, we have to talk about, but we're going to start a series this morning called Basics for a Better Year. And we're going to, we're going to break down some of the teachings of Jesus over the next a few weeks and just look at what he's got to say about how we should live our life, how we should expect his blessing and we should expect his favor on on our life. And we're gonna we're gonna look at one sure way how to have a better year for us. Um, so next week I wanna I wanna try something new uh, here at Hobbs First Assembly. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you um, five days of private devotions that you can you can take home with you. We're going to do it for the next three weeks. So starting next week, we're going to have five days. The next week we'll have five days, and the next week we'll have five days. Um, we're gonna we're gonna send them home with you, and that way we can all be studying the same thing at the same time, and it'll all be in reference to that week's. Um, Scripture, so we're gonna we're gonna do that now. Now there's some uh, they're built on the SOAP model, S O A P model, which which just basically gives us Scripture, which stands for the S. Uh, the O is an observation about that Scripture. The A in the SOAP stands for application of that Scripture. How does how does that apply to me? And then the P, of course, is prayer. And, and so I've, I've been teaching you time and time again about the difference between a prayer life and a prayer list. And so we're going to have some ideas about how to enhance our prayer life uh, during these devotion times. Uh, so I, I think it's going to be fun. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, what it'll do, it'll get us all studying the same thing every day. And it will help us find a, a sense of unity in our devotion life. Now, now I know, you know, it's the day of new beginnings and we always make a new year's resolution and, and usually it's broken by the middle of the month. I heard one guy say, my new year's resolution is to keep my resolutions. So, okay, that was funnier than I thought in my mind than than obviously you thought about. So, uh, but so so we're gonna we're gonna try it. We're just gonna we're just gonna dig in and look at it and and see how it works. I think they'll each take about ten minutes a day. You can do them uh, in the morning. You can do them at noon. You can do them in the evening. Whatever whatever time you're best and fully focused and more awake, you can you can take a time and do it. But we're gonna do it Monday through Friday. Five days of devotions, and we're gonna and we're gonna do them uh, together. And then and then we'll come back the next week, and we'll have a, a different message. And then we'll have five more different devotions about uh, that message. But but listen, it's gonna have us praying the exact same prayers. How many of you know? Scripture says, "Where two can agree as touching any one thing, it shall be done." 
So we're going to pray the same thing together. Now it's going to be a, a look a little differently how you pray it, but, but we're going to basically be praying the same thing. We're going to be seeking God on the same thing. And then you can spend time going over your prayer list, your, your things you want God to, to work on and to fix and the people you want him to fix. Everybody good? All right. So we're going to go to the book of Matthew this morning, and we're going to look in the seventh chapter. And this is, this is the Sermon on the Mount, which we're going to break down some of Jesus' teachings through the Sermon on, on the Mount. And we're going to look at them throughout this series, and we're going to, and we're going to actually look at how Jesus tells us we can have a better year. So Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 29 is, is what I'm going to read. We've got it up on the uh, screen for you. If you don't have your Bible or your iPhone or your Android or, or however you look at Scripture, uh, we've got it there for you. So let's read Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through uh, 29. This is Jesus speaking. He said, anyone who listens to my teaching and obeys me is wise. How many of you know I could stop right there and preach a great message about listening to Jesus? Not only listening to him, but being obedient to what he says, how he instructs us to live, how he says we should we should live. But he said he said he's wise like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on rock. But anyone who hears my teaching and ignores it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will fall with a mighty crash." After Jesus finished speaking, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught as one who had real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. So let's just pray. Let's just begin with a word of prayer today and ask the Lord to help us see what he wants us to glean from this portion of of Scripture. Father, we just want to thank you again this morning for your presence in this house. We know it is your presence that makes the difference in our life. It is your presence that brings healing. It is your presence that brings strength. It is your presence that brings anointing. And Father, we thank you again and again and again for your presence in this house. Lord, we pray you give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us. Give us wisdom, give us wise hearts to receive what your Word is saying to us, how you declare your truth to us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and everyone said, amen. Thank you for praying with me. Well, here's the first question. Why should we listen to Jesus? Why should we listen to Jesus? To Jesus. In verse 28, after Jesus finished speaking, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught as one who had real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. So what separates Jesus from all the other teachers of religious law. We know there were some great teachers, there, there were some great philosophers, there were some great uh, orators who, who, who taught different things down through the different centuries, but Jesus stands above, head and shoulders above, all of the other teachers of moral law. Here's the reason why. Number one, Jesus modeled a better life. He modeled a better life. Any religion on the planet acknowledges how Jesus lived and that he's an incredible example of a life lived above reproach. Even those who, who hate him the most acknowledge that he lived a moral life. He lived a life above reproach. In fact, Islam calls him a prophet. They cannot dispute the, the life that he lived. If he lived such a life, 
shouldn't we at least pay attention to what he says, how he instructs us to live? Now, I know he was fully God. For some people, that's a, a problem, that he has this divine side to him. So, so he was able to overcome sin. He was able to overcome temptation. He was able to overcome some of the things that you and I fail at so miserably it's because he had this divine side. But, but I want you to remember, as we follow his model, is that he was also fully man. It's one of the most difficult things for us to understand. I've read all the debates. I've read all the, the people trying to describe Jesus as fully God and Jesus as fully man. And honestly, I still don't get it. I still don't understand it. But it's what the scriptures declare to us, that Jesus, he was fully God, but he lived his life as a man, just like you and I live our life. He, he faced the same temptations. He faced the same trials. He faced the same difficulties. He had relationship issues. He had work issues, all of those kind of things. So we got to know that as a man, he lived a perfect life, yet without sin, the Bible says. As a man, he set a great example for us. And we follow along his example because of how he lived. As a man, he showed us how to respond to difficulty. As a man, he showed us how to respond to relational issues. As a man, he showed us how to exhibit righteous anger. As a man, he showed us how to grieve the loss of friends and family. He showed us all of those things. As a man, he showed us how to experience joy a joy that no one can ever take away from us. Jesus showed us how to experience that joy. As a man, Jesus modeled a better way to live life. We should listen to such a man. We should be willing to say, all right, I see your life. I see how you lived. I see how you overcame all those difficulties. What can you teach me? How can we, how can we grow? Jesus taught others how to have a better life. He, he not only showed us how, he not only modeled it, but he taught us. He literally spoke words to us that we now have some 2,000 years later that we can glean from, that we can, we can understand, that we know that Jesus taught us uh, how to have a better life. His teachings raised the level of life for any who heard him teach. Any who listened to him in that day, they, they just like we saw here in the 28th verse, in the, in the 28th verse, after Jesus finished speaking, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he spoke as one who had authority. Now, I could, I could break down that verse for you. It just, it's got a lot of in-depth meaning, a lot of hidden undertone meaning, but I don't really have time. But we're just gonna take it at face value today. They were amazed at his teaching, at the things that he said, at the, at the things that he, that he showed them. He, he taught them. Listen, they heard him teach and their lives were changed because of his teaching. And any of us who have the privilege of reading his word today can be changed as well. We can live a better life because of the words of Jesus. Billions have been tremendously affected by his teaching. That's what this series is about. We're going to break down the words of Jesus and we're going to see how we can have a better year. Can you say praise the Lord for the promise of a, of a better year? This is what this series is about, learning to live by the teachings of Jesus so we can have a better life. Letter C says this, Jesus mastered death and then conquered the grave to give us life. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. There's difficulties, there's trials, there's tribulation all of us face and all of us will go through. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And because he's overcome the world, you and I can overcome the world as well. Amen. You and I can live victorious. Well, Jesus mastered death. In fact, that's the gospel message at the root, that he came and lived a perfect life. 
died for us, rose again the third day, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. That is the basic gospel message. In fact, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 breaks it down as simply as this. If you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's it. That's all we got to get to. That one simple truth that he did conquer death, that God raised him from the dead. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Well, as we look at our text, Jesus talked about when, not if, the storm would come. He talked about when, not if, the storm will come. One of the great preachers of yesteryear said this, you're either going through a storm right now or you've just come out of a storm or you're getting ready to go into another storm. <laughs> Isn't that encouraging? That, just a, that, just, that should just make us all smile. It should make us all happy. It should make us all, well, so we, so we got as we look at our text, Jesus talked about when, not if, the storm will come. We must admit the storms are a part of our life. I've been around a long time, a long time. And I can tell you, storms will come and storms will go, but they, but they will always be present with us. They'll always be working. They'll always be moving in our life. In verse 25, Jesus said this, though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house. How many of those storms come in many forms? Storms take on many different shapes. We're, we were we were all faced with this a great COVID storm of last year. All of us went through that. All of us, all of us have battled that. All of us have faced that. We've had very close family deal with that. We've we've lost loved ones. We've we've lost people in this church because of because of that whole issue. And and so all of us have faced that that storm. But, but I'll tell you, storms come in so many other forms as well. Uh, they come in the in the in the face of our, our local economy. Uh, we're such an oil-driven industry right here in this region. When the oil suffers, our economy suffers. People lose their job. People have to move back home, wherever home is. They, they come out here for a while and then they, they have to move behind. So the local economy, we have, to, we have to face that storm in life. We have family issues. We have a sickness, we have loss of a job, we have divorce, we have death of a loved one, we have our investments go sour. Anybody else can acknowledge that? We, so we, you know, we just have storms come in many, many forms. There's the storm of raising stepchildren. Uh, those family issues that always come about, there, there's just those Storms, and, and I'll tell you this, storms can be vicious. They can come lightly, they can blow in and blow out, and we're seemingly not really affected, but I will tell you, there are some storms, they're just vicious. They just attack us relentlessly over and over and over again. It just seems like the, way, the rain comes in torrents. I, I, I chose the, the New Living Translation because I like the way it says that one particular verse. Though the rain comes in torrents and floodwaters rise and the wind beat against that house, that just speaks of the relentless viciousness of storms, how they, how they come and they beat against us, not for just a few minutes, but for days and weeks and even months, those storms are vicious and they beat against us. Storms affect everyone. No one is immune to the storms of life. No one, all of us will face storms. Every single one of us will go through issues. The point that Jesus was making is when the storms come. We know they're coming. 
I can't tell you what the storms of 2021 are going to be, but they're going to be just as real as the storms of 2020. They're going to be just as vicious. They're going to be just as hard. They're going to be just as difficult. I hate to bust your bubble. But they're coming. And we just got to be ready for them. That's what Jesus is saying to us. We've got to be ready. We've got to, we've got to take some kind of a, 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 an avenue. We've got, to, we've got to listen to somebody who's going to tell us how we can live our life effectively, even though the storm comes. Why is it that some people seem to make it better through storms in life than others? Have you thought about that? It's just, it seems like some people just, just move along. Well, Jesus tells us, our third point this morning is, Jesus tells us what causes our house to fall. In verse 26, he said, anyone who hears my teaching and ignores it is foolish. It's like a person who builds a house on sand. So, so here's what we've got. We've got this idea that Jesus has handed down to us and we've got to learn to listen to him and we've got to learn to build our house on the rock that he has established so we can make it through the storms, so we can weather the storm. That's how some people seem to do better during the storms of life than other people because their house is built on a solid rock. The teaching of Jesus, the things that he has shared with us, the things that he has given to us, the things that he has shown us. We, we build our house upon false ideals. I don't know about you, but I've listened to enough people over the years. I just kind of shake my head in, in bewilderment at some of the stupid ideas that people base their life on. Listen, apart from Jesus, we have no hope. Apart from the teachings of Christ, we have, we have no idea what we're doing. We build upon imperfect models. We, we build upon something that somebody else has built upon. And pretty soon we find out that they just built on sand as well. We build while ignoring what Jesus teaches us. Can I tell you, this is the greatest tragedy today. When the world turns its back on the teachings of the Messiah, on the teachings of, of this fully God, fully man, man named Jesus, when the world turns its back on him, when we ignore his teachings, look out, we're headed for trouble. It's where our society is today. It's what our society has succumbed to. They've, they've ignored the teachings of this book. They've ignored the, the letters written in red that Jesus poured his life over and spent his life teaching us and sharing with us. And we've, and we've built on ignoring what Jesus teaches us and our house is built on sand and we'll crumble and we'll fall and we'll crush ourselves just as Jesus said, well, how do we build on a solid foundation? Verse 24, Jesus said this, anyone who listens to my teaching and obeys me is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Well, we've already belabored this point, but we've got to listen to what Jesus says. Can I tell you something? Listening is more than just hearing the sound reverberate through our eardrums. Listening is heeding and following and letting the words of Jesus sink down into our heart where we not only listen to them, we not only heard what he said, but we walk in obedience to what he said. In fact, that's the letter B. We've got to obey, obey what Jesus says. So, so we have this idea that we can, we can take parts we like and we can leave parts we don't like. We can, we can receive 
the parts of Jesus' teaching that we enjoy, but the more difficult parts we gotta we gotta leave alone. We gotta let them go. We gotta we gotta not follow them. We get, we we don't want to we don't have to obey them. But can I tell you, we've got to take the whole counsel of God's word, not just the parts we like, not just the parts that are enjoyable. But we've got to understand that we've got to follow what Jesus said. And then let her see, we've got to give our heart to him. In fact, I quoted it to you, Romans 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Can I tell you something? We've got to give our heart to Jesus. And we do that. We do that in several ways. We, we surrender to him. We commit to him. We, we, we agree to read his word. We agree to study scripture. We agree to, to, to learn those things that, that he has taught us. But can I tell you something? We got to be transparent with the word of God. We've got to be open to it. And so as we go through these devotion times uh, over the next 15 days or so, over the next three weeks. Can I, can, I just, can I just tell you, just read it with an open heart. Ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me? How do you want to work in me? How do you want to change me through these scriptures that we're going to be reading and we're going to be, we're going to be praying about? And in Psalms chapter 139, verse 23 through 24, it says, search me, O God, and know my heart, try me, and know my anxieties, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me into the way everlasting. We've got to become transparent with the Word of God. We've got to allow the Spirit of God to speak clearly into our heart. It's the only way it's going to work. That's the only way at the end of this you're going to feel any differently, is that you be transparent in these devotion times. You got to be pliable. You got to allow the Spirit of God to, to mold you, to change you, to work in your heart, to, to quicken those areas that you need to work on, that you need to allow Him, that you need to allow Him to, to work in. In Psalm chapter 51, David said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. We've got to be pliable. We've got to allow the Holy Spirit to actually have access into the innermost being of our life. Philippians chapter 2, Paul said, For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Listen, as you go through these devotion times, I want you to know, I want you to understand, I want you to clearly see as we're transparent to God and we say, search my heart. And then we say, create in me a, a clean spirit, a, a right spirit. When we, when we become pliable to God, he will do exactly what you ask him to do. He will do exactly what you allow him to do. But I'll tell you this, he's a gentleman. He's not going to force his way. Oh, he'll bring conviction. He'll try to bring about change in a healthy way. But can I tell you this? Unless you are transparent and pliable, he'll never be able to work in your life. Then we gotta be focused. We gotta be focused. That's why I want to do this. I, that's why I, want to, why I want to write these little devotion pieces for you, for each of you to have and to take home and just pour over. You can, you can write notes on them. You can tear them up. You can, you can do whatever you want to with them. But, but as we focus on what the Word of God says to us and tells us, listen, Psalm 19 verse 14 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Then we got to 
Letter D, we got to give our plans to him. I don't know what plans you've got for this new year. I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know what your goals are. I don't, you know, for years I would, I would take the week between Christmas and New Year's just to kind of meditate on the past year, check off the wins and acknowledge the losses, okay? Just to be honest with you, I would, I would check off the wins and acknowledge the losses, but then I would focus on the coming year and just think about, okay, these are some goals that I, that I want to set. These are some, you may have already done that. You may just be thinking, oh, I don't know what kind of goals I want to set. Can I just encourage you? Just, just be open, be open, be open, be open, and let's give our plans to God. Let's let him speak to us. Let's let him clearly define his goals for our life. Is that okay? Are you all right with that? Will you, will you just say, I, I'll do it. I, I'll, I'll give my plans to him. Listen, his plans are good. He said in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. His plans are good. We can surrender whatever plans we have, whatever goals we've already established, we can surrender them to him because his plans are good. His plans will bring fulfillment like we never imagined. And I could be totally different at the end of the year. We could be thinking things. We could be doing things. We could just give him your plans. Ephesians Chapter 1, verse 5 says, Having predestined us to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. According to the good pleasure of his will. And then the last thing is we've got to give our thanks to him. Every day. It doesn't matter what storms come. It doesn't matter if we're in those few peaceful moments where there's no storm or we know one's coming and we're just bracing for it. We got to be sure to thank him for all of those things. And Jesus said, were there not 10 cleansed? You remember the story? There were 10 lepers who came to him. All of them asked him for healing. And he said, go your way. And, they're, and on their way, on their journey, they're all healed. But only one came back to thank him. Only one. He said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found to return to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. There were two artists who were asked to commission a piece, a P-I-E-C-E -E on P-E-A-C-E. -E. They were asked to commission a piece on peace. One drew a beautiful meadow green grass and flowers and deer frolicking and trees and a blue sky. A beautiful picture of peace. The other drew a tumultuous sea. Waves crashing, splashing, horrible wind. You could just, you, you could look at the picture and almost see the wind blowing, just 
the leaves on the trees were just rattled. The guy said, well, I don't understand why. I, under, I get the first picture, but why? Why this? And the artist drew their attention to one of the branches and one of the trees, and there was a nest. There were two baby doves in this nest on this branch, sound asleep in the midst of the storm. That should be a picture of us in the coming year. We should be able to rest. We should be able to sleep. It doesn't matter what wind comes. It doesn't matter what rain comes. It doesn't matter what floods come. It doesn't matter what fire comes. We should be able to rest in the midst of the storm. Father, thank you. Thank you for giving us such peace. Right in the middle of our storms. Father, I pray that you would just help us would help us to trust the words of your son Jesus to listen to him to obey him in every area not, not what we want to but in every area help us walk in obedience you'll give us a better year. Storms will come, but we can have peace. Thank you. With your heads bowed, your eyes closed, no one looking around, let me just ask you, Maybe you're ready to start a new journey today. A new journey with Jesus. Maybe at one time you knew him. Everything was good, but you've allowed some stuff to kind of creep in. And you know it. And you just so you know what? I just need to I need to repent of those things and just ask Jesus to forgive me so that I can be whole and new and start this new year on a brand new beginning. If that's you, can I just see your hand? I promise I won't embarrass you. I won't call you out. Thank you, others of you. You'd just lift your hand with those who have raised their hand. You'd just say, you know what? I just know that I've got to, I've got to begin fresh and new. Father, thank you for those who've raised their hand. Thank you for their heart, for their honesty, God. Thank you for their willingness just to admit to you and to themselves they need you. Father, your word says that if we'd ask you to forgive us, you would be faithful to forgive us. So that's what we're asking. Father, you just help us wash the old away. Help everything become new and fresh 
start over this morning in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I know we haven't done this in a number of (laughs) probably months. I'm going to invite you to come down to the altar. I, I think there's plenty of room for us. I'm going to invite you to come. Just maintain distance as best you can. Maybe I'm just going to invite you just to move forward a few rows. I don't, I don't know. But can we just come and commit this year to being obedient to the Lord's Word, listen to the teachings of Jesus, and just ask Him what He wants to say to you from this service this morning? Come on, the worship team's going to take us back into worship. I just want to encourage you just to come and find you a place to get along with God. Let Him talk to you. Let him speak to you. Come on.
Jesus, we thank you for your plans. Father, more importantly, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord. The opportunity to walk in your ways and in your plans. To walk in your grace and your mercy. Father, I thank you for the boldness and the strength and the health that is coming and that he's here right now this morning. We thank you, Father, for the times we get to spend with you, Father, as we take these next few days together, Lord. Just pour out your spirit in us, pour out your word in us, Father, that we would be able to use that in times of battles and storms as our weapon of peace and strength, whatever is needed to fight that battle, to fight that storm. We thank you for your word. We thank you for worship, Father. Father, I pray for every family that is here in this house that's represented, Lord, that you shield them, you protect them, that you strengthen them, Father, that you give them rest. This beautiful Sunday, Lord, and as we prepare to just receive you throughout the week, Father, we thank you and we glorify you and we praise you. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. Reminder real quick, tomorrow we're taking down all the Christmas decorations. So if you guys can come and help us for an hour, hopefully it'll only take us an hour. So if you guys have uh, time to come, if you'll meet us here um, and help us take all this beautiful decorations down. I get sad around this time. But um, God bless you guys, and we will see you guys Wednesday night service for um, everyone, and then Sunday morning. God bless you guys. Thank you guys for joining us for today's message. If you made the decision to follow Jesus or you rededicated your life, we want to know all about it. So we're asking that you go to our website, click the guest tab, and fill out your name and all your information that you'd like to share with us. Thank you guys again, and we'll see you next week.